I'm so happy to be here. This truly feels like the first day of my life. <laughs> so my talk today is about exploring the potential of the Web Speech API in karaoke. So hello, my name is Anouk Rodrigues. You can say Rodriguez or different acts, I don't mind. And I work as a front-end developer at Hacktar. You can find the many websites I have accounts on on my personal website. So go through there. <laughs> and I try to spend as much time as possible tending to my blog. And I also participate in the indie web community. And I've written about it in the past. So you should definitely check it out. But for this talk, I should mention that I do not represent any browser vendor. And I actually cannot remember when I last been to karaoke, because it was definitely before the pandemic, which might change tonight. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> And the truth is, the reason this talk even popped into my head is because I'm a massive fan of Erasmus. Not a stan, I'm just a big fan. I'm sure people have heard about them, but I'm not going to ask because I, I don't. And this band is pretty much the reason why I'm here. I literally make this band one of my core personality traits. <laughs> it's because of them. Everything that is about my personality goes back to this magical year of 2004 when this band came out with this big single called In the Shadows, and that's when my half emo self discovered them. I wasn't a full emo because my mom didn't let me, <laughs> but it was because of them that I discovered my favorite music, my favorite color is green, specifically this shade of green, and this was their website at the time, uh, which I thought, that's not good enough. I need to create the fan site. So I learned how to code via the view source to learn how to build a fan site about for Erasmus. And I even had a very successful forum at the time. But we don't have archives of that. So anyways, because of that, I had a problem that I needed to fix. And whenever I go karaoke, they only have one song from the Erasmus, Rude. And it's always in the shadows, which is a bop, a solid hit. I love it, but it's not my favorite. And I needed more. I really need more. So, and while you can look up the instrumentals for all the songs on YouTube and things like that, it just wasn't enough. And I knew I had to build something. And then my mind wandered. What if we had more than just lyrics on the screen? What if we could gamify the experience? I mean, what, we, what if we could match what we're saying to the lyrics? Because I know I would win. I know all the lyrics from the heart. So I looked up. I searched speech to text, and I realized that the results in the first page were all from private companies. And I know that there is like a browser native speech recognition, and it's free. So let's talk about Web Speech API, in particular, the speech recognition. Uh, the, the Web Speech API is split into two, the speech recognition and the speech synthesis. So while it's starting to be obvious where I'm going to be using the speech recognition, one of the core ideas for it was not for karaoke, but it was actually to enable developers to use the speech recognition for, as, a, as an accessible tool for inputs for forms, continuous dictation, and control. In fact, there's a really interesting old draft showing examples of how you would use this API in forms to input data into it. It's quite old, but it, it is really, really interesting to have a look at. So as I was playing around with, with, with this API, I was testing it out in different browsers, and this following pop-up appeared while I was testing it in Safari, and it says, Safari would like to access speech recognition. The speech data from this app will be sent to Apple to process your request. This will also help Apple improve its speech recognition technology. And I was like, oh, OK, interesting. And I click OK, and it just vanished. And I've never saw this pop-up ever again. But it sort of answered what some of you might be asking right now. At the MDN website, they, they explain it much better than I could. It says, on some browsers like Chrome, using, web, using speech recognition on a web page involves a server-based recognition engine. Your audio is sent to a web service for recognition processing, so it won't work offline. And I was like, OK, that makes sense. And while I don't understand the magic that happens in the background for, when processing the audio, for most browsers, web speech API yeah, it doesn't appear to work offline. It needs access to a lot of data to train on, and that is something that the browser vendors that are owned by massive corporations can have an easier time doing so. <laughs> they have access to all the necessary infrastructure for sending, processing, storing, and also data to train on. 
So it's no surprise that once you look at the browser support for speech recognition, Firefox is not one of them. But at the same time, there are reasons for it. And in other, even so, even when it's supported in other browsers, it still requires a vendor prefix or a different name. I was actually, for Firefox, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be in touch with somebody who is working on this particular bit of it right now. However, I was pointed out, I was pointed to this very, very interesting thread which talks about the, their position and their concerns about privacy and implementation. So it's really, really interesting to have a look at and why this is not made freely available yet. So I'm going to go straight to my demo and then we'll look through what has happened there. So uh, you have to bear with me because, as you know, the Wi-Fi here is not existing. So I'm <laughs> so I'm going to like do a, a switch, and I will attempt to demo using 4G. Yeah, I've done the switch. That was very clever of me. <laughs> right. So I, I wasn't able to test this in Safari and get it to work properly. So I'm going to be using Chrome. And this is what I built. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be using a song from the Rasmus because, you know, copyright. So I had to look up, oh, what is the royalty-free, copyright-free, everything that will not get me in trouble type of thing. And turns out nursery rhymes are one of them. <laughs> Unfortunately, I will have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> The good thing is that karaoke is not for good singers. We don't want show-offs. It's all, it's all about stage performance and singing badly, so it's perfect. It's just not the 4 o'clock type of thing that everybody's ready for, so... <laughs> Let's do a couple of tests here. Uh, I want to show you how the potential for it, is the, for, for it is there, but I also want to show you how the, we may not be there if you're singing it. So I've built my karaoke thing. I was like, I decided to go, you know, do a switch theme, do a karaoke thing. I thought the flamingo one was because I actually saw on a video of a band that they had the, a flamingo band. I was like, why not? Let me do that. You have your classical C going through. Oh, uh, you have your classical C thing going on. And yeah, let's switch back to the, so that it's more readable. All right. And I have to also awkwardly bend. I just realized my microphone is down there, so <laughs> my laptop microphone. So I'm going to like, hopefully, I'm just going to say it. So twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Right. Everything I said was right. And to prove to you that I'm not fooling you, fooling anyone, let's test this. I can actually show that what I'm saying will be captured somewhere in here. So even if I start speaking to it, it is actually picking up what I'm saying. So I am not like lying and pretending that, oh yeah, I did this thing, yeah, it works, trust me. Uh, Right, I, yeah, so it does work, as you can see, and it is checking if you're actually saying the right things or not. My husband insisted that you should give credit if you get one word right, so I put the orange one, and I was like, okay, whatever, I don't think it's fair. But he was an emotional support, he was my emotional support, so I, I granted this wish. <laughs> but there it is. No. 
now it comes the bad part. It's like the bit where I sing. <laughs> and this is where anything can happen. Because if you like connect words together, it might not work out. But let's see how it works. And yeah, I'm so sorry. This is. <laughs> okay. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Right, so let's stop. That is the right one, right? Yep. Right. So I've decided to use what was available in the browser for free. It was just HTML, vanilla JavaScript, CSS, no libraries, nothing. Obviously, uh, just I had to like mimic, because it only works with HTTPS, by the way, so that, that had to be forced. But other than that, it doesn't use anything else. So let me show you how. So let's lay out our base HTML. I won't post the code here for readability, but we'll take two buttons. We'll add our, like that little, dip, just a real-time transcript, just so you to have a test. We'll load our audio. We'll load our lyrics and our JavaScript. Eventually, once you add CSS, it, it looks something like this, which still looks better than your local bar. I, I'll give myself that credit. I'm not a designer, but I don't think it looks that bad. So we'll initiate our speech recognition and ask to show the interim results, set Great British as the language, and append to our doc. It looks more or less something like this. And it's, there's a fun quirk. So this is when I, was, I thought it was going to be straightforward. I'll just copy paste the code from MDN. and it'll work. Right. So the speech recognition actually stops after a while. And on mobile, it, it has like sound notifications. So a trick that, I, that people have been doing is that towards the end, once it recognizes that it ended, you force it to start again. Which is quite funny, because on phones, you'll hear like a notification sound going down and going up. And it's, quite frustrating. It takes also a while to figure out that this is the reason why. And it makes sense. Like, the browsers don't want to, you to leave your laptop on for like all day and leave. And they don't want to process that data constantly. So it, it, it kind of is understandable why they would do that. So we'll add our lyrics in a similar fashion to, like subtitles would work. We'll add our text. The first line will be Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, which starts at 5 seconds and ends at 11.2 seconds. And what is happening here? When the speech recognition is initiated, the song will also start. We'll check if the current time falls between the start and the end that is the, the, of the gap that is intended. And if yes, we'll add a class showing that this is the current lyric. And when the speech recognition is initiated, this is what happens. Like, I'll, for, on, in this case, on click, it will start recognition, and you'll start playing the music which will then get a time update, so, which I didn't know uh, this uh, HTML media API was able to do this. We'll send you like, okay, currently the song that is playing is at three seconds. Okay, currently it's at four seconds, which then you go for each lyric and it just like, oh yeah, is it still within this gap? If so, uh, oh, it's the current line going on and you animate it or et cetera, et cetera. So, and the same the other way around. So once it ends, you check, okay, am I out this time gap? Then say, then set it, set it as the a line in the past, and we'll do some checks. And the check is like, okay, um, is what the transcription is the transcription matching what is in the lyrics? Yes, no, and then show and adapt and animate and highlight accordingly. So in the end of the day, it's a lot of if else. It's just <laughs> I thought it would be more complicated than that, but it. In the end of the day, it will be JavaScript that you use every single day. 
But so what is the verdict? Look, there is potential. <laughs> You're not going to see it rolled out in bars or in your browser anytime soon, though. Probably, if you were using a paid, a paid service, like Shazam does, or, or even from Google, the voice-to-text, um, voice I believe it's called, but there are, those services exist, and you can pay for them, and they probably work better. But because we're just talking about what is native in the browser, this is, it is what it is. So yeah, it's, not, it's OK for small voice notes. It's not perfect for singing. And it probably won't work with a rap, <laughs> which is something something else has explored. Someone else has explored. There are really fun projects built on top of this. Tony Edwards did a fantastic talk called Beats, Rhymes, and Unit Tests. And in his talk, he wanted to see if the Web Speech API could help him jot down his rhymes. And similar to me, Tony noted that it wasn't perfect, but it was a fun experiment. And I really recommend watching this talk. Uh, Stephanie Eccles did. Um, if you want to learn more, Stephanie Eccles did, built a fun center chat for the 12 Days of Web Dev Challenge. And also, Wesbos has a chapter on it on his free JavaScript course. And there's also, this is like more things that you can have a look at. So, the Web Captioner project, uh, this is an old screenshot. Uh, it has actually been sunset la last week. It's a project that was quite useful for people during the pandemic, and it was a, a, a fantastic tool that also did live transcription. But it, like, like I said, it wasn't perfect, but it, they did fun experiments like checking the, or your microphone levels and things like that. So the code is really like an interesting tool. And there's also quite a few polyfills available, implementations with WebRTC, and like I said, lots of private companies that will offer this as a service. So what's next? I don't know. <laughs> so right, after all this, you might be wondering, OK, what now? I don't have any answers. I would like to see these types of APIs grow, because they do open a world of free creative opportunities. If everybody can like, do something in the browser for free, like a fun thing, that's all I want. But meanwhile, you can contribute to other things. There's this project from Mozilla called Common Voice. You can donate your voice, and most importantly, at least me, since I'm obviously not a native uh, English speaker, you can donate your accent as well and also do quality control and volunteer your time on that. And meanwhile, I will share and support the current call to action for, for the speech recognition sibling, the speech synthesis. So you should look up Leonie Watson's amazing talk, Designing Voice Interfaces, where a call to action is presented to support CSS speech. And I want to pull this talk to you, and um, you should go watch it. OK, cool, whatever. <laughs> How is this useful for your everyday job? I mean, to be honest, are you going to use Web Speech API at work? Probably not. In fact, even for accessibility, the odds are you're going to be asked to implement a curse in Accessible Toolbar instead. <laughs> so. What do I do with this? You may be asking. And before I answer that, let me show you how I ended up here. Look at what inspires you, said Tim Holman at FFConf 2018. Um, this was one of the FFConf talks that completely changed me. Back in 2018, Tim Holman uh, talk showed us some really fun demos, and then he compiled what he learned from building seem seemingly useless things. And he ends the talk with any idea you have as value. So inspired by Tim, let's look at what we did. We have at least one working demo. We experimented with the browser API, the web speech API, and the HTML media element. I did, I did have to do a lot of JavaScript, even though it felt a bit repetitive logic-wise. It was a lot of things to do. I had content for a talk. I did poke around CSS animations, and I had to do lots of fun acts to get things to work that way, especially when they're constantly being checked and things like that. I had to read and understand API specifications, and there was a lot of time going around quirks and what people were documenting in GitHub and actually doing lots of things like that. So yeah, you can learn by building useless things. And only recently, I gave myself permission to build unproductive things that are not for my job. 
And in the past, I would feel guilty if I didn't do productive things after work. And side projects don't need to be monetized in order to be valid. They don't need to become NPN packages or open source pa packages. And, and if you ever think your idea isn't worth it, ignore that thought. So I had some time to burn. So I did build another demo. But before, let's get back to the main topic, Drasmus. <laughs> uh, this is a screenshot of my work Slack. And <laughs> in five years, I was away for one year in maternity leave. I mentioned Erasmus 162 times, which is an average of 30 th 33 times a year. This is really bad. Like, <laughs> and I'm here on a stage talking about them again. So, this is <laughs> so uh, the Web Speech API does not work at the same time on your laptop. Like, if I have a, a browser running with, with it, it doesn't. If I open another tab, it immediately stops both of them. It just stop. no, we're not doing that for free. Sorry, <laughs> bias. <it. laughs> so it doesn't work. However, ideally, this is what I would have liked to have done. I actually, oh, is it playing? Where did it go? Oh, okay, not a problem. I actually transcribed my whole talk, and in it, and in it, I sneaked in. Uh, song, um, while lyrics are copyrighted, song titles are not. So I've been sneaking <laughs> the Erasmus song titles from my favorite album throughout this talk. And that video did not play, but ooh, let me mirror. But I have it screen recorded. <laughs> You're not getting away with it. You're all going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I did work, I'm not Anna Kendrick, see, it's, this is, <laughs> so I did everything I said, not, every, not right now, but that's why I've been like sticking here, trying to stick to the script, but I've done a thing that it will check where have I said the Erasmus song titles from the album Dead Letters, my favorite album, and if, yeah, there we go. <laughs> So if I said weird things, that's because, yeah. Um, I wish I had had this in the background running, but if I were to do the demo, it wouldn't work, so I had to pick. So, go away. Um, let's head back just for my last slide, because, you know, why not? Thank you, everyone.